What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving y'all my top five underrated chess openings specifically for you E4 players against the Sicilian defense. Now, I do want to mention that there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing knight f3 and then breaking through in the center with d4 following the main line. However, oftentimes players don't want to go into the main line because first off, it can take up to a lifetime to learn all the variations and chess opening theory. And on top of that, black is usually pretty well prepared for the chess opening strategy strategy and positions that arise out of these main lines. What can we play against the Sicilian defense to take our opponent by surprise while still maintaining a very high level of chess that has been proven at the master and grandmaster level? Again, I'm going to be showing y'all five openings. Let's start off with the delayed wing gambit with this crazy looking move, A3. What on earth am I saying? You guys are probably thinking that I have officially lost my mind, but the truth is, is that I actually learned this from none other than the ginger GM legend himself, Simon Williams. He has played this in some of the biggest games of his life. Really, it's a wing gambit, but it's delayed. We're supporting this B4 push with the pawn on a three, and oftentimes in this position, black will play a move like knight C6, which honestly makes a ton of sense. This knight fights for the center of the board, and it attacks this B4 square, but we're not really afraid of this knight c6 move we're gonna play b4 anyways and nine times out of ten maybe even 99 times out of 100 you're gonna see black take the pawn and then take it again i mean if black doesn't take this pawn on b4 we're simply gonna play b5 have a huge edge and space advantage on the queen side of the board continue with knight f3 advance in the center we're gonna have a very nice game there so what happens if knight takes b4 is played well we now have c3 and following knight c6 we have d4 with a very nice center. I mean, a pawn on e4, d4, and a pawn on c3 supporting it, not to mention a very active rook attacking that a7 pawn. I mean, here in this position, if black doesn't fight for the center of the board, we're simply going to play knight f3, bishop d3, castle king side, d5, and e5 options will always be available, and we have ourselves a very nice game. So oftentimes in this position, black does not want to allow white to do whatever they please. Black wants to try to get some counterplay here, and here we see the move d5 against this i recommend taking it and after queen takes d5 playing again the crazy looking move knight a3 this is one of simon williams favorite moves and honestly i think this position is nearly winning for white we're wanting to play knight b5 which threatens knight c7 forking the king rook and queen and notice how a move like a6 doesn't really stop knight b5 because after a takes b5 we simply win that rook on a8 if black just continues with the move like knight f6 here we can now play knight b5 again threatening to play knight c7 and now following queen d8 push with d5 an absolutely amazing move attacking that knight on c6 if a move like knight e5 is played we can play bishop f4 attacking that knight and then once the knight gets out of the way Play knight c7, again, forking the king and the rook on a8. And if a move like knight takes d5, we take back with the queen. Idea being, if queen takes d5, we have now seen our main idea come to fruition with knight c7 check, forking the king, rook, and queen. And white has a simply won game here. That was just one of the lines of the delayed wing gambit, but this is a very dangerous opening for white. What is our next opening option? Well, here I'm going to be recommending the Snyder variation. Now, this is slightly less aggressive, but it's a very solid system for white. We're wanting to play bishop b2 and really put pressure on that g7 pawn. And oftentimes in this position, black will want to play d5. I mean, this move b3 seems a little passive, at least at first sight. But against d5, we actually see that this move is a big mistake because we can take back. And following queen takes d5, I mean, black may want to do something like this because right now they have a centralized queen. It seems as if white has been very passive. And right now black's actually threatening queen e5, forking our king and rook, but in this position, we can just play knight c3, attacking the queen, and after a move like queen d8, play bishop b2, and now as y'all can see, we simply have a solid lead in development with our two minor pieces on b2 and c3. We can continue with knight f3, bishop b5 check, queen e2, castle either king side or queen side, continue to break through with d4, put our rooks on d1 and e1, a very simple game for white, and I give white the big edge here. 
Our next underrated chess opening for white against the Sicilian defense is the Stanchion Cochrane variation with c4, really trying to get a grip on the b5 and d5 squares. Why is this important? Well, really, in the Sicilian defense, black really does need at some point to break through with b5 or d5 in order to get any level of counterplay. So by playing c4 and by putting our pawn on e4, we're really trying to keep black locked up for the rest of this game. Now, the one disadvantage of playing c4 is obviously the square on d4 is very weak. Let's say black plays a move like knight c6. Well, here we're going to continue with knight c3, and most of the time, if your opponent sees that this is a weakness, they're going to play g6 followed by bishop g7. I mean, really trying to clamp down on that square on d4, but here we're completely okay. We're going to play bishop g2. Notice how we fee and shut out our light squared bishop, then continue with knight g2. After a move like knight f6, play d3. Castle king side. I mean, there's really not a 10 that black can do from stopping this very nice setup from white, which gives us a lot of flexibility in this position. Following a move like a6, we can play h3. And if a move like rook b8 is played, really trying to, again, break through with b5, we do not want to allow black any type of counterplay. We're going to play a4. I mean, notice how our light squared pawns are just really keeping black in a very passive stance right now. And if a move like knight e8, wanting to play knight d4, we're completely okay. I actually recommend the idea of bishop e3, just getting a little bit of pressure on that d4 square. And if knight d4 is played, there's actually no reason to take this knight. We can actually play rook b1, followed by b4, really trying to attack that pawn on c5. Now, the whole idea here is that if c takes b4, we can take back with the rook, and this knight on d4 is no longer a very fortified piece. This knight is going to have to run away or take our knight on e2, so we want black to take on b4. And if a move like b6, trying to hold the pawn structure together, we can simply continue with f4, advancing on the king side of the board, followed by a move like king h2, and yes, black does have a very nice square with the knight here, but keep in mind, we can literally take this knight whenever we want to. We can take it with the bishop, we can take it with our knight on e2, probably not in this situation, because the pawn would take back and fork both of our minor pieces, but needless to say, we can take this knight off the board whenever we please, and really the big advantage for white here is that we are controlling the pace of the game. What do I mean by this? Well, right now, we have an advantage on the queen side of the board in space. We have an advantage on the king side of the board in space. We can actually continue continue with moves like g4, f5 advancing on the king side. We can play moves like b5, locking this game up whenever we please. There's really not a ton in this position that black can do. I mean, again, as I've said, this knight on d4 is strong, but look at the rest of black's pieces. This rook on b8 is very timid. This knight on c7 is very awkward. The bishop on d7 is a solid piece, but really, I mean, if you look at all black's pieces, they're very cramped, most of them on the first and second ranks from their point of view. We have a good space advantage. We have flexibility in this position, and I really like white's game. The next chess opening for white that we're going to cover is knight e2 with the Karis variation. Now, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw this move, I thought it looked absolutely terrible. I mean, why would we ever play a move like knight e2 blocking in both our queen and our bishop? But I actually think that this move is very creative and can help both of you guys who are trying to play the main line as well as you guys who are trying to avoid the main line. How on earth is this possible? Well, notice how the knight on e2 supports a d4 push just like the knight on f3. Why would we play knight e2 instead of knight f3 if we're going to play d4 anyways? Well, the reason is, is that we can throw black off of their usual game plan. I mean, let's say usually black is a hyper accelerated dragon player and plays a move like g6 on move two. In this situation, they may go, wait a second, this knight e2 move looks really bad. Let's play knight c6 and really try to get a grip on that d4 square and then boom you play d4, you surprise them, and all of a sudden they take on d4, you take back with a knight, and they're in new territory. So that's one reason you can play knight e2. The other reason that you can play knight e2 against the Sicilian is to actually almost go into a Vienna game type system with knight c3 followed by g3, bishop g2, castling kingside, breakthrough eventually with d4 or f4 in that instance. This is actually called the chameleon variation, and it has pretty good success at the master and grandmaster level but oftentimes against knight e2 again black will get over aggressive and play d5 and honestly i can totally see why a sicilian player would want to play this i mean knight e2 does look at first sight absolutely terrible but against d5 we can simply take it and after queen takes d5 play knight c3 now notice here how we have a very similar position to that of the scandinavian defense except that black's pawn is on c5 
and our knight is on e2. Who does this help? Does this help black or does this help white? I actually think that it helps white because usually in the Scandinavian defense, black plays queen a5, but because of the pawn on c5, black actually can't do this. And the very next move, no matter what black plays, including queen e5, trying to pin our knight here, we can still play d4. I mean, breaking through in the center of the board. If a move like c takes d4, we have bishop f4 and following queen c5, we now notice that the knight on e2, just like the knight on f3, can take on d4. And I mean, this position is very good for white, nearly winning. We have a huge advantage in development. We have knight b5 ideas looking to jump into c7. We can always play moves like queen d2, castle queen side, bishop e2, get the rooks involved on d1 and e1. We have some very fun attacking chess ahead of us here. And last but not least, we have the beaver gambit. What on earth is the beaver gambit? Was actually just made up by Jonathan Schwartz on his YouTube chess channel. He's a very good YouTuber. I highly recommend you go check his content out. Basically, he came up with a pretty strong system against the Sicilian defense, in which case he starts off with the Alapin variation. And against e6, plays knight f3. And following knight f6, plays e5. And now after knight d5, I mean, up to this point, this is very common for the Alapin variation. Usually here, white breaks through with a move like d4 but with the beaver gambit we play the crazy looking move b4 and honestly this is one of the funnest chess openings i have ever seen in my entire life especially against the sicilian defense really right now we are attacking that pawn on c5 and if black accepts the gambit we can play c4 giving this knight a choice where does this knight want to go does it want to go to b6 f4 e7 c7 while i do want to mention that either b6 or f4 gives white a clearly better game and if knight e7 is played we can still play d4 bishop d3 castle king side soon break with a move like a3 and we almost have a reverse banco gambit type setup so i really do like that line and against knight c7 we can again break through with d4 oftentimes here black is going to play d6 trying to undermine our very strong center in the center of the board and right now we can play bishop d3 and against d takes e5 jonathan schwartz really gives two main moves we can play knight takes e5 or we could play bishop g5 both of these have a ton of chess opening traps my personal favorite is knight takes e5 really inviting black to play queen takes d4 and by the way this is the best move i mean this queen here is attacking both the knight and the rook on a1 this seems to be clearly winning but we now play knight takes f7 and all of a sudden black has no idea what on earth is going on i mean we're attacking black's rook they're attacking our rook black's also attacking our knight but if black takes this knight we have bishop g6 check attacking the king followed by winning that queen on d4 there's actually only one move here that keeps black alive and that is the move g6 but this is nearly impossible to find most of the time you're going to see black play a move like bishop c5 in which case we can play bishop e3 a move like rook g8 in which case we can play knight g5 or a move like queen takes a1 in which case we can take the rook and i mean notice the activity of our bishop pair really pouncing down on the king side of the board as well as our queen on d1 we have some serious firepower going towards the king side of the board and the king on e8 is extremely vulnerable to attack we want to play queen h5 or take the pawn on h7 so black may play a move like g6 but against this we simply take back with the knight and after h6 g6 play bishop takes g6 with check attacking the king notice how the king can't go to d7 or d8 because of our queen on d1 and following king e7 we play bishop g5 attacking the king and the only move here for black is playing queen f6 in which case we simply win a queen continue with queen f3 check and if king takes g6 we win that bishop on f8 and again white is clearly winning this game if you'd like to learn more on the theory behind the beaver gambit, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn more about all of these chess openings in general against the Sicilian defense, click our playlist to the right, which shows all of these openings. Leave a comment to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.